Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today we are going to do my August fountain pen review. These are all the pens that I had inked up and initially I started off with this page. We went through all the colors and then all the fountain pens. One thing I did differently this month was fill two fountain pens with the same ink just to see how they how the ink differs from a fountain pen in a fine nib versus a fountain pen in a larger nib, which in this case was a stub. So these are the two fountain pens I use and this is the ink that I inked it up with, which was Jacques Herma Blue Ocean. Thoughts about that? A little bit later. I inked up seven pens. I put them into this case which is a Galen leather case. It's a six pen case but if you have a smaller pen you can fit it on top and it um, I don't think it messes up the case even after if I don't want this in here the case closes just fine and it doesn't have like a super big hump it looks just fine to me so just make sure if you were to do something like that that you use a smaller pen that will fit pretty flush at the top so these are the pens I have I also inked up pens that I received new inks uh, this month for the Hollywood subscription from Atlas Stationaire and so I inked those up here and just uh, kind of set myself a reminder. I did a little doodle and um, I'm going to talk about those. I also did mid-month talk about some issues as they were happening while I was using the pens so that I just don't forget. Now I do have a lot of writing samples in this notebook and then also in my main like family journal notebook so I will be showing you some examples of how those perform during the month. I will show you when you put too much ink of these samples it does bleed through a bit or definitely show through so I'm skipping the page and I need to glue those together and we're going to move on to my overview setup page. Okay so I set it up this way just a little bit different because I'm always trying to change it up um, slightly and I am looking at the fountain pens pretty much the same way as I did beginning of the month where I'm looking at comfort comfortability the ink and the flow and so considering all those rather than breaking it down I am just going to give you an overall which ones I think perform the best versus the worst and there were a lot that I would kind of just put in the best versus the worst, um, but I'm gonna rank them. To start off with, my very first fountain pen that did the best um, is this one. And this is the Birmingham Pen Company, and it has a Bach nib on it. And with this pen and ink combination, it was just so beautiful. <laughs> it was, oh, I'm going to show you some spreads of what it looked like. But before we do that, I am going to uh, just write this in for first place. So this pen had no flow issues. I had it, I hadn't like used it every single day. And when I would pick, pick it up, it would perform just very well. This ink is so pretty. So this pen color is called Apocalypto. It's in a fine. And the ink is Van Diemen. Duck Nape. And when you see this ink all in one page in writing, it just blows my mind with how beautiful it shades. 
So here is using just this pen and even like adding bulk or um, block letters and coloring them in. It just is such a pretty color. So I really enjoyed that. This color has like a slight sheen to it, a slight uh, red sheen, just very subtle. Um, but other than that, it has some really nice green shading. The pen is also very lightweight and I was just really comfortable with it because I could write long writing sessions with it. So that was very enjoyable. Here's another example. Okay, so the next pen that was a great writer for me was this one. This is the Franklin Christoph Model 46, and it is in the Solid Ice. I always forget the name, so I have to write it down. But it's a Solid Ice, and it is just, it's lightweight. It has a Sig Nib, which makes it very nice and comfortable to write with. The ink is gorgeous. And not too far from the Mandarin Duck Nape. It's just like darker. And this ink is called Van Diemen's Keiko Tea. It has great shading and it, it does lean a little bit more blue um, than the Duck Nape, um, but it has great shading and because it's a sig nib, the edges, it's just so comfortable to write with. Um, I've noticed that because it is a medium, I find that um, there's no issues with the ink flowing through the pen. It doesn't feel dry. It feels like the whole writing um, experience is very smooth and juicy. So I really enjoyed that. And this color is also just as beautiful when it's written on um, multiple pages. So here is this one, Franklin Christoph. And um, it's actually model 46, but it's a Keiko T. And you can see that amazing shading. Okay, so my third favorite or the next pen would be this one, which is a Franklin Christoph Model 25. I like how you have that cool feature to cap your pen. Um, also, there's nothing causing any issues here with your grip because it's just one straight barrel. And then you have that cool hidden nib, partially hidden nib. And the ink is Jacques. Blue Ocean And this is in a fine So this is one of two pens that were inked up with this color and it's very pretty. I do find you get some subtle like twinkles, some subtle sparkle uh, with this ink with the fine nib and then also the shift in the shading. So let me go back 
to the actual sample. So it's this one with the gold in there and you could see some of the gold. This is where, you know, this one was nice, but the reason why it's third is because it would get clogged up and that's because of the ink, uh, because they have some gold sparkle in there. A lot of the sparkle would end up in the feed and clog up the pen. So I had to flush some of the ink through just to get it going. And that's where this one kind of, you know, was set back from the other two because of that issue. The other two had no flow issues. It just was smooth writing. But this one, I did get some stops, hard stops, hard starts, sorry, and um, some issues with the flow. So I... It was frustrating, and I know it's the ink and not the pen. Some examples is right here. I started it, and you can see that gold come through. This is when it started to clog up a bit, so I had to flush it. But then I also wrote in my journal with it, and if you're writing with it for a while, it's not going to give you many issues. Like Once it starts, it won't really stop. It's just when you pause for too long and start up again, it tends to stop a bit. Um, and there's just like subtle, subtle gold sparkles. So my next pen in line would be the Opus 88 uh, demonstrator. And you could see that beautiful color, the ink. So I have to keep this opening open so that everything will flow through. I have noticed that this ink has gotten a little bit darker over time. Just like sitting in the barrel. And this is actually a broad this ink for me is too light, um, would be too light in anything else but abroad. And even as abroad, it's kind of, you know, for me on the edge of, can I read this? Will I be able to read this in five years? The color is very pretty, but still. It's Dominant Industry Le Nymphius. Le Nuage. And it writes fine. One of the things that bothers me about like really light inks is that when you're writing and you don't see the ink come out, or it seems like when you write and it's very light, it doesn't feel like you actually wrote the letter, even though you did, and you can't see the letter or you can't see um, the main parts of the letter. That frustrates me. But I've grown accustomed to the ink over this past month, and I do like it more than the other three that are about to come next because it did get a little bit darker over time. I don't know if that's just because it's exposed to light in this barrel, but also if you give it a second, it tends to get a little bit darker than when you put it first put it down. After getting used to that here, you could see um, that it is it is a little bit more legible than I initially imagined. So. It took some time, but I didn't mind it. Um, I do have a larger sample in here. So it does feel like this is, I can read this, but um, <clears throat> this was after about a few days of it sitting in the barrel. So I don't know if that really makes an effect, but um, it's still a pretty ink. I feel like it comes out really wet and juicy in this Opus 88 broad. Definitely worth trying, especially if you are someone who likes light inks. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I have to say about that. So the next one is the second half of the two pens with the one ink. This is in the Leonardo. And it is in fifth because there was some hard starts and I had to 
um, started up. And I guess maybe that's due to the shimmer, even though this isn't a stub. Moment, Momento Magico. But I will say that it's hard for me to, uh, without knowing in advance that this ink or this pen and ink combination, this pen and ink combination are from the same ink. So they look completely different in, in a stub versus a fine. I wanted to do that experiment because if you're someone who feels like you need to have all the inks like I do or some of us on on YouTube and Instagram, you don't. If you have different nib sizes and you have the same ink, it could look completely different like a brand new ink. So definitely um if you, you know, definitely don't feel a certain way about not having all the inks because if you can get a different experience on the page. So just keep that in mind. So this is the black mat and it is in a stub and this is the Jacques Ebba Blue Ocean. I know some people like to put their stub nibs on an angle to get some interesting like variation in their writing. I can't do that with a stub nib and the way I write at an angle. It just cuts into the paper. Um, I don't know if it's just because my angles are more sharp, but I, when I'm writing with a stub, I have to write up and down so that you can really see... Um, well, with that, you can really see how this, uh, the line very, the line widths are in a stub. So going um, up and down, it's thicker, and then going across, it's very thin. And that's just how I enjoy writing with a stub, if I have to write with a stub. It's pretty straight up and down. I rarely uh, write in cursive with a stub nib. Next pen kind of surprised me a little bit. I was a little disappointed. This pen I thought would be just perfect with this ink. The ink felt like it would be wet, but it felt very dry. So this is the Frank, and you can see that was a hard start. Franklin Kristoff. Model 45, and the ink is Dominant Industry. Horseshoe Bend, which is a very pretty horse shoe. Bend. It's a very pretty color. The green has really pretty shading similar to Van Diemen's and um, Duck Nape and the Cake Coty, but it's just in this pen, it felt dry, like, like I'm dragging the nib instead of the nib gliding. And I think, I want to say it might be the ink. This is in a Sig Braun, which Oops, a sib. Um, it's a sig broad. And so, I don't know, it was just not as comfortable writing with it. And I didn't want to pick it up as often. Uh, the sig broad, you would think because it's a sig nib that it would be a little bit more comfortable to write with, which it was more comfortable than a stub but it was just the ink flow. I don't know why it felt like it just wasn't, it was just really dry. And you can see here, it just comes out really, really, really light. Um, so yeah, so this is the Dominant Industry Horseshoe Bend with that pen. And then last but not least, or maybe I should say last and least, is this one. This is my Mont Blanc 145. And 
I think it's a nib issue. It has a hard start unless I write really low to the paper at a very low angle. Or I write really hard on the page so that there's no skipping. But you can see the skipping and it's not um, supposed to be there. It's not like the ink is light. It's a dark ink. It does have good shading, but there is skipping in this pen. And this is the Taranishi. Guitar ink in the salon. Deville. This one it just has some issues. I'm pretty sure it's with the nib. I haven't done anything to this nib. I'm kind of scared to because of the price of the pen. And I think if I were to get anything done, it would be to get a Nibmeister to work on it. So those are the order of the pens. Again, this one worked out a lot, like a lot better than I imagine. Plus the green and the green of the pen, body of the pen just fit. And it was just a perfect combination, very wet, um, so pretty on paper. And um, to believe it, believe it or not, I haven't used this pen in probably two and a half, maybe three years. So I'm um, definitely going to keep that pen. I was thinking about letting it go, but I'm not going to do that. Let's move on. I did have some pens that I inked up because I had new inks. So that is this pen. This is a Sailor 1911 Large. So this is Sailor. Nineteen eleven large. And I forgot the name of the body, but it's like this really pretty tealy blue or light blue baby blue with a hint of green in it because it's so light. Um, <laughs> but it's really pretty. And this is a large, so it's it actually fits my hand unposted really well. Um, this ink is called Ferris Wheel Press Ruby Royal Flush. And this ink is just gorgeous. It has some shading and some shimmer um, and some sheen. It just has everything going for it. You can see that, so cool. And it comes out really nice effortlessly in this pen. And then this is, um, is this a, this is a broad. So I've been enjoying that. Next is something that has surprised me. I didn't think I would like this ink. I was really skeptical, but uh, it's in this pen, which I keep calling it tailored pen company, which is not true. It's Hardy Pen Rights. Brittany, get it in your head. I keep getting those two mixed up. I think maybe at one point in time, I was trying to decide between the two um, at the time, which I wanted to buy from. But this is Hardy Penrites. And this ink, we all know, why I might not like this ink. It's because it's too, I felt like it was too light. But this is one of those tricky inks. What it does is, this is in a Franklin Kristoff. Uh, Sig medium. Now what it does is it writes really light and then give it a second. As it dries, it darkens up. And when I realized that, I was like, 
very intrigued. I was like, okay, I could definitely see this yellow ink. It works just fine. <laughs> um, and it's so pretty. It has very pretty shading. Oh, and this is the Ferris wheel press, which has like that, they call it yellow shading or yellow sheen. It looks green to me. Um, but yes, this yellow is just, I think it's my favorite yellow. I don't have that many, but it's definitely a yellow that is has impressed me in the fact that I can read it. I don't like it how when it comes out on paper and it's so light, I can't even, I can't even look to see if my writing uh, was correct as I'm writing it until it dries uh, or it gets darker. But uh, this is the Paniter. Yellow Gold is the English name. And uh, this is, it's just so pretty. Now it does feel a little dry, um, kind of similar to the Franklin Christoph Model 45 in the Sig Broad, but because it's just, there's so much tooth to it, but I know that this nib shouldn't have that much tooth um, in water ink. So I feel like the ink is a bit dry, but it's just, it's bright enough to make you smile. And I, uh, I'm just impressed. Okay, so the next one is the ink in this pen. And I have been looking for the name of this pen. I bought it off of someone on Instagram and I couldn't find her message anymore that told me what is the name of this pen. I know I have it written down in one of my millions of books. Um, I haven't written it down enough to memorize the name. So I'm just gonna call it Sparkly White Pen. And um, this is in a fine. And I am using this pink ink, which is growing on me too. So I like it when it's swatched out because it just, it's one of those inks that has like the edges that are really dark and the inside is really light. Um, but when you write with it, you don't see it as well or it doesn't come out as well. This is the Monteverde. Emotions line. Kindness. Now, writing in this fine nib, it's really wet. Like for it being a fine, it's almost as thick as the broad sailor, although, you know, this isn't a Eastern nib. So there's that, probably not the best comparison. I mean, I really like the combination. I just wish I knew the name of this pen. The nib writes perfect with this ink. Let me show you some examples. We have this one. So I like it when I do block lettering and color things in where you can really see the color show and then here it is in the swatch, how you can see the dark with the light. So here, but this was in a dip pen, it looked really nice. And then, you know, it's a lot lighter in a regular fountain pen. So that kind of threw me off just a little, but I still like it. I still like it. Here we have this example. Okay, so this brings me to the last pen, and it is in my Estrabrook. And it is a green ink. And it writes really wet in this pen. I just haven't used this um, pen enough.
not as much as some of the other colors. There was a hard start there. I think because of the oils of my hands. This is in the journaler nib. Very comfortable to write with. No issues. Uh, and the ink is wearing gold. I'm getting a bunch of hard starts. I'm not quite sure why. Other than maybe it's the paper and having my hand kind of wipe on the paper a little bit. Wearing gold. The autumn. Night. After a thousand years, the longest name ever. So this ink is like a light green, but it has some gold shimmer to it. And um, like hints of like blue, but I guess you wouldn't really see that in the pen. You see it more in the ink swatch itself. So this is the ink swatch. You can see that gold shimmer. And you can see it in the writing samples. It's not as stark as um, in the ink swatch and again I haven't used it as much as I would like to but this is uh, one of them and you can see you might be able to see some of the shimmer in there yeah so again this is my overview if you have any questions please post them in the comments below. Let me know if you liked this kind of overview um, or if you liked one of my other ones from a previous month. Uh, also, I do, I'm going to be attempting to do 30 days, 30 inks in September. So I'm not gonna have a specific set of fountain pens that are inked up all at the beginning of the month. It will just happen gradually throughout the month. And then I will have 30 pens inked up and my plan is to use some of my favorites for the month of October, most likely, and um, see how it goes from there. So 30 days, 30 inks, 30 days is definitely a challenge. I hope I will make it to the very end, but if not, at least I tried. And yeah, so thank you for watching. If you have any questions, again, put them in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.